SCP-1627 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures the forest in which SCP-1627 is located is to be secured by 50, 50, armed foundation personnel. The species shall be allowed to grow in the area, but only within foundation set boundaries. D-class testing of SCP-1627 is to take place within Site 56 in a waterproof testing chamber, after which the affected D-class shall be left in the chamber until death. If SCP-1627 is discovered outside of this area, the previously mentioned procedures should be set in place, the town of, TN, USA is to be quarantined and monitored until all instances of SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B are identified and neutralized. The town will continue to be observed for up to one, one, year after all anomalous entities have been assumed to be deceased, TTT, Description, SCP-1627 is a species of fungus superficially resembling fly agaric mushrooms, Ammonita muscaria. This species can cause vomiting, internal bleeding, blindness, and hallucinations if ingested, SCP-1627's anomalous effects manifest as a result of ritualistic behavior composed of the following criteria, SCP-1627 comes into contact with human blood, SCP-1627 is ingested by a human subject, SCP-1627 is ingested in the absence of direct sunlight, if a subject ingests the fungus without meeting all of the previously mentioned requirements, said subject will experience SCP. 1627's non-anomalous toxic effects. Once subject meets the above requirements, that subject will be transfigured into either an instance of SCP-1627-A or an instance of SCP-1627-B, SCP-1627-A information, close file, SCP-1627-A refers to persons who have completed the aforementioned ritual successfully with their own blood. Upon the completion of the process, any damage present within the individual's body will be completely healed. This includes tissue damage bacterial and viral infections, and cancer 1. SCP-1627 subjects are unaffected by pathogens, as well as being able to survive without food or water for extended periods of time. Instances can only be distinguished from non-anomalous humans by the faint presence of a white glow emanating from their bodies, which is present when they are put into areas with illumination measuring no more than 10 lux, when a human being comes into direct skin contact with an instance of SCP-1627-A, all damage and infections present within them will be healed. Over the course of the following two, two, weeks, that subject will experience rapid senescence until death, often by natural causes associated with old age. This appears to give nourishment to the SCP-1627-A instance, SCP-1627-B information, Close file, SCP-1627-B refers to persons who have completed the aforementioned ritual successfully with a different person's blood. Upon the completion of the ritual, the subject will experience uniformly dark pigmentation across its entire form with two points of light located on its upper half, which appear to function as eyes. Subjects will also enter into a semi-solid state, and while resting, appear to be formless, Specimens of SCP-1627-B are sentient and sapient, as well as being capable of vocalizing. Very rarely do individuals retain their original personality after the transformation, instead, instances will display predatory behavior. These organisms will often kill their prey via suffocation after entering into their respiratory tract. Once their target is dead, SCP-1627-B will invade the corpse and consume the victim's cardiovascular, nervous, and reproductive systems, as well as excreting preservatives into the rest of the organism's tissues in order to prevent decay of the corpse. Instances of SCP-1627-B will inhabit human corpses in order to blend into populated areas. Organisms tend to live in groups of three, three, but have been found living alone and in groups of up to seven, seven, members. While SCP-1627-B cannot hold a consistently solid humanoid form outside of a corpse, it may remain within a host body indefinitely, 
SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B appear to be invulnerable to physical damage, however, both groups are susceptible to starvation within three, three, weeks. In addition, if instances of SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B are brought together, both subjects will die immediately after making contact. The cause of this is currently being studied, SCP-1627 was discovered on June 4, 1995 in the small secluded mountain town of Tn, USA after agents received reports of people of shadow and light coming out from the nearby forest. Within the town, several groups had formed based on reactions to the entities, with the largest groups being the Daylight Huntsmen, the Brotherhood of the Night, and the Enders. See the attached history file 1627 data and incident report 1627 alpha for greater detail, history file 1627 data, SCP objects involved, SCP-1627, GOI's involved, GOI-187, Daylight Huntsman, GOI-188, Brotherhood of Night, GOI-189, Enders, Summary, Citizens of, TN, USA came into contact with SCP-1627 when a group of people identifying themselves as the cult of the new entered into the town square at 20 hundred hours on 14-02-1995 and performed the SCP-1627 ritual on their members. Creating several instances of SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B. A few members of the cult attempted to speak a message of power and evolution, in the midst of this, a riot started among the crowd, which resulted in the death of all members of the cult and several civilians. Within the next day, several groups formed among the citizens of the town, the largest and most prominent of these being Boy 187 through Boy 189. These groups gained control of the town over the course of two, two, months and grew more and more unstable until redacted to, Boy 187, Daylight Huntsman. Information, close file, several members of Boy 187, Boy 187, Daylight Huntsman, was organized by Regis Newman as a group of people who had decided to support the SCP-1627-A instances and actively attempted to combat SCP-1627-B due to SCP-1627-B's hunting and killing methods, members of the group usually wore gas masks and were extremely hesitant in trusting people outside of the group. It is reported that prior to foundation containment of SCP-1627, these individuals refused to interact with persons that weren't in the group and often did not let anyone else join. As part of a larger initiative, these members also actively destroyed all methods of communication, including phones and internet as well as ensuring no citizens left the city after the initial exposure to the anomaly in order to halt the spread of SCP-1627-B outside of the town. Out of the three most prominent groups during this time, GOI-187 was the most noticeable and prevalent due to their equipment and methods of operation, when members of this group identified SCP-1627-A instances, they invited them to join in their ranks while making sure to not touch them. Due to the, the group's full body outfits, distinguishing between anomalous and non anomalous individuals was challenging. Whenever members from this group successfully captured members of GOI 188, Brotherhood of Night, they used them to feed the SCP 1627A instances among their ranks. Members of this group were reported to have searched random houses in order to identify and capture members of GOI 188 and SCP 1627B instances. The people captured were often executed by a incineration 3 in the town's crematorium, members of this group also tended to ignore GOI-189, Enders, because it just seemed like another crazy fucking cult whose bullshit they had to wait through, redacted for, GOI-188, Brotherhood of Night, Information, Close File. GOI-188 was formed under the leadership of Martha Grande with the premise that SCP-1627-B was the next step of humanity. This group's stated purpose is to aid in the spread of SCP-1627-B, either through the SCP-1627 ritual, or assisting the entities in finding food and corpses to inhabit. However, 
due to the radical actions taken by members of POI 187, Daylight Huntsman, a large portion of the membership of the Brotherhood came from townspeople who were displeased with the changes the Huntsman had made, members of this group are typically reclusive due to the methods utilized by the Huntsman. However, they also willingly gave up their own bodies for use by SCP-1627-B if needed. Relations of this group with Goy-189, Enders, were virtually non-existent, due to the massive number of small cultist groups that had formed in the town during this time, Redacted 5, Goy-189, Enders, Information, Close File, Copy of a Flyer Handed Out by Goy-189, Goy-189, Enders, was formed by Lars Peterson in response to the SCP-1627 ritual in the town square. This group formed their own religion around the concepts of SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B, with the stated core principles consisting of balance and preparation for the shatter. They believed SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B to be the human forms of good and evil, respectively, Members insisted that these anomalies were the universe signaling that the path to the end is caused by extremes. This group was generally avoided and ignored by Goy-187, Daylight Huntsman, and Goy-188, Brotherhood of Night. Dot. The major preachings of the group were about an end of times and walking down the middle. They believed that the only way to salvation was to live a neutral life, and thus only acted in a manner that could be described as such by their own interpretation. They reviled extremes and claimed that the perfect world would consist of issues presented not in black and white, but in grey. Members also spoke of duality and how it is better that neither side benefits than one side getting help, Goy 189 held many gatherings in a variety of places, mostly private residences, but occasionally churches and open areas, where they invited people to join them in preparation for the end and safety from the SCP-1627 entities. During these gatherings, the speakers of the group, known as equalizers, would often go out among the crowds and hold conversations in order to inform people of the group's messages, Redacted 6, Incident Report 1627 Alpha, on June 4, 1995, Foundation discovered the town in which these events occurred after recovering several instances of SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B from the surrounding countryside. When agents arrived on the scene, conflict between the three groups had escalated greatly. MTF Sigma 7, aka Turn Riot at the Light, MTF Upsilon 4, aka Please Don't Touch Me, and MTF ETA 9, aka Mall Security, were dispatched to subdue the citizens and contain instances of SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B, at this time, members of GOI-187, Daylight Huntsman, had apparently become paranoid to the point of complete destruction of internal structure and betrayal between members. Meanwhile, Goy-188, Brotherhood of Night, had released approximately 20, 20, instances of SCP-1627-B that they had kept hidden in order to let them freely hunt while they forced people at random to eat blood-covered instances of SCP-1627. Goy-189, Enders, had begun killing people by various means not involving direct contact. When questioned about these actions later, members responded that they had come to the conclusion that killing was a neutral, and therefore just. Action 7, Foundation agents went into the town and subdued the majority of the citizens using anomalous outbreak protocol row 05, after which many instances of SCP-1627-A and SCP-1627-B were located and contained. All members of the town were interrogated, particularly those reported to be belonging in one of the three aforementioned groups, before being administered Class A amnestics and released. All information about the groups and events occurring within the town was gathered from the interviews and SCP-1627 was found and contained. The species was discovered in Forest, a 50 square kilometers area of wooded land, which appears to be the only location where SCP-1627 grows naturally at this time, footnotes, 1. Congenital genetic mutations are unaffected, 2. 
See Incident Report 1627 Alpha in the documentation of SCP-1627-3. Goy-187 appears to be unaware of SCP-1627-B's undamageable nature, 4. See Incident Report 1627 Alpha in the documentation of SCP-1627-5. See Incident Report 1627 Alpha in the documentation of SCP-1627-6. See Incident Report 1627 Alpha in the documentation of SCP-1627-7. Rationalizations for this included it can both be merciful and malicious and it could either kill the monsters or the people, therefore, it lies in the middle.